Hey up troops, it's A Little Tin here again, and this time we're going to be looking at Goyo. Now Goyo's just been reworked for Year 7 Season 1 Demon Veil, vale, and now he's got these things. Vulcan Canisters instead of Vulcan Shields. Now the worrying thing with Vulcan Canisters is it only takes one shot. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, this is hot. Oh god. <laughs> now it only takes one shot. For these to get destroyed you've got to be careful with them because the area of effect that they have is massive now straight away at the beginning of this video i'm going to stick my neck on the line and i'm going to say goyo is now the best area control operator in siege and what i mean by that is twofold the area of effect that these new canisters have is massive it's twice the size roughly of what smoke can cover also the time that they take smoke's canisters last anywhere between sort of 10 and 12 seconds Goyo's new Vulcan canisters last 20 seconds, almost double the time. They are incredibly good. Now, with how good that utility is, it does come with some risk. Smoke and Tachanka, the other area control operators, can use their utility from behind a shield. They can quick peek around doors and windows and stay in relative safety. Whereas with Goyo and the new Vulcan canisters, the main way they're going to be detonated is being shot. That means occasionally you're going to have to put your face in the line of sight of an attacker, which is a bit risky, of course. However, there are ways, and we'll go through them in this video, where you can put the canisters in certain locations around the map, which will generally keep you safe and still do a decent job. So just for a change, we're going to keep the format exactly the same. We're going to start with the loadout, go through the basics of the utility, and then get into some tips and tricks on how to use it, and through some examples on rank maps of where it's going to come in useful. Now, just a quick one. I was looking through the YouTube analytics the other day, and apparently 75% roughly of the people that watch these videos don't subscribe to me. Do me a favor. If you're one of the 75%, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes my day. And if you don't like the next video, you can just unsubscribe. But well, I'll try my best so you do. Anyway, if you do, thanks very much. As always, that's probably enough of me waffling on. Get stuck into it. So let's start as we always do then with the loadout. And just before I click on loadout, I mean, if you've got this skin, look at the drip, the blazer, the Hawaiian shirt, the cowboy hat, absolutely unreal. There's no way he isn't winning around. Anyway, so the weapons that Goyo can use are the Vector, which is the same as Mirror's Gun, and also the TCSG, which is the same as what Cade can have. Now, personally, I run the Vector, and there's a stat that I saw recently about the Vector, which I was quite surprised at. I knew it was a high fire rate gun, but it's 1,200 fire rate. The SMG-11, which is considered to be like a crazy high fire rate, is only 1,270. So it's only 70 fire rate less than the SMG-11. It does a lot less damage than the SMG-11. Uh, the SMG-11 does 35. But it's still 23 damage with that fire rate is incredible. The, I don't think the recoil is particularly bad. As usual with most things in this game, I run a vert and a flash. With now we now we've been able to use the, the one-time sights on all guns, I've actually started using the red dot a little bit more, red dot C. If I wouldn't use red dot C, I'd probably use reflex B, which I've really been enjoying. Um, but obviously the sights are completely uh, completely up to you. But yeah, I go flash eye to vert grip on the on the vector. The TCSG is not completely useless. It's actually a really solid gun. It's essentially a DMR. It's a semi-automatic shotgun that fires slugs, basically. Um it's it's essentially a DMR. It's got good destruction on soft walls. It's it's a it's a decent decent option to use personally. I really like the Vector. You haven't got much of a choice in the pistol uh, front, just the PT29, and you've got prox alarms or C4. I take C4 pretty much every time. There is the odd site maybe where we need a prox alarm or two if we don't need the C4, but the C4s are just just the best secondary that an operator can have on defense, really, isn't it? So I generally run the C4. So for me with Goyo, Vector, Flash, and Vergrip, the PT29. And the C4. So let's go over Goyo's new utility, the Vulcan Canister, which has taken the place of the Vulcan Shield. So if I just pop this on the floor here, you'll see that it looks pretty similar to the old canister that was on the back of the Vulcan Shield. However, it's now standalone. These can be placed on floors, walls, and barricades. It doesn't matter whether the floor or wall is hard or soft, they can still be placed down. They're detonated much like the old Vulcan Shield, just with one bullet, and it'll set it off. However, they work completely differently. I'm going to need to stand back here. The reason I'm using this area in Oregon here is because it's a really good area of the map to show the, the sort of area of effect of things because it's quite a wide open space. So if I stand back and pop this shield, you'll see from here just the, the sheer space that this now covers. So you can see that whole area is now covered in fire. I mean, that is a massive area. That is a far bigger area than smoke or um, Tachanka covers with his Shimiko launcher. And you'll probably notice while we're still watching this, I haven't looped this video, 
this utility now covers an area for 20 seconds. It's insane. There we go. I think this now is the best area denial utility in Siege. However, it comes with its risks. As I've explained at the beginning, you need to be in a safe place to detonate the Vulcan canister because you it's not like Smoke who can be hiding behind a shield here and, you know, throw a smoke over the top of his shield, or Tachanka can fire a Shamika over, from his Shamika launcher, a fire bomb, or whatever you call it, a Molotov, over the top of the shield. Goyo is going to have to actually peek, and actually peek to destroy, um, and get a shot on the Vulcan canister. So it comes with its risks. But in terms of its effect, I'll just set that off one more time so you can see. It really does last 20 seconds, and the area is absolutely huge. I would say that's probably twice as big, give or take, of the area that Tachanka and, and Smoke can cover. I think Smoke covers a slightly bigger area than Tachanka, but that's a mass. It's near enough the whole of blue in Oregon. And I'm still talking because this is still going on. 20 seconds, and you get four of these. So times 20 by four is 80 seconds. It's a minute and 20 seconds worth of area denial that Goyo now brings to the table. It's huge. So in terms of the placement of the Vulcan canisters, you can see I've put two down here, and I want to show you the safer way of, of going about using these. So what you need to do and where the risk comes with Goyo is you need to peek around the corner to actually detonate the Vulcan canister. So what you need to think when you're placing these down is where can I place these where they're still going to be effective, but where I can like detonate them from safety. So if we think, if, that, if we only got this one here, right, we, obviously the, the attackers are going to be holding from blue here. If the only canister we've got is here, it means we're going to have to expose ourselves from this angle to here to peak this. And at this point, we're exposed to anyone who's swinging from the double door in blue there. If you use the second canister placement, you can peak that from here in relative safety of this angle here. So now we can detonate that from here without exposing ourselves to this angle. So you've just got to think, where can I put these where I can detonate them without putting myself in the line of fire of an angle that somebody might be holding? We know full well that the attackers are going to be coming in through blue here. Let me just get this barricade quickly. We know full well the attackers are going to be coming in here and holding this sort of angle. Obviously, just it's going to be tough because there's a line here normally. But the attackers are going to be here or here as they push around. So you want to be in a place where you can set this um, Vulcan canister off with relative ease and relative safety. So as you can see, I've placed two more Vulcan canisters down, and it's absolutely incredible that you can get a Vulcan canister on this tiny little sort of handrail wall here. But using that same theory that I've just told you about being able to set the canisters off, if we're trying to defend pillar stairs here or, or tower stairs, and you know there's an attacker who's going to be holding this angle here every time, this um, Vulcan shield here is now far more safe to detonate on the stairs because you don't have to expose yourself to this angle. You can just hold from here, which, you know, you can hold a pixel onto that there as opposed to putting it on the left-hand side, where the only way you can set that off is by holding it here. And by that point, you've smoked from the guy who's holding you on the stairs. So this is another good example of where you can set that off there without having to expose yourself to the angle and, and using this one here. But, I mean, the fact that you can put these on the uh, on the lower part of the stairs here is mad. Like, you can even get one right on the bottom so you can make it even safer. I mean, if you look at this as well, look how much higher up the stairs this is going to go than you think it is as well. Like, it's nearly halfway up the stairs there. I'm so close to those flames. It's nearly halfway up the stairs there. So yeah, back to the point. Make sure you put the Vulcan canisters in a place where you can detonate them from safety without exposing yourself to the angle that the attackers are holding. So the big thing to talk about with these new canisters is the damage that they do and how much damage they do per tick. Now, if I set one of these off, I have to be careful because when I go in these custom games to, to do these tests, my operators only have 35 health, as you can see in the bottom, but I'll stand in the flames for one tick and you'll see that they actually do 12 damage per tick. So if I just nip in and nip back out, you can see that I've gone from 35 to 23. And again, I've gone from 23 down to 11. And if I go one more time, because it does 12 a tick, I'm a goner. So 12 damage per tick, for every tick that the attackers are in the fire for. So that's the basics of the new Vulcan canister boxed off. We're now going to go through a few ways you can use them to your advantage. And the first thing I want to talk about is on barricades. There's actually two ways to use the Vulcan canisters on barricades. The first one that I'm going to show you is halfway up the barricade like this. Now, the reason you're going to put this here is when an attacker comes around to this side, the, the canister is now here. When they punch the window twice and they don't break the canister, if they break the canister on the back, it will break. But when they break the part of the barricade where the canister is, the fire, because it's halfway up the barricade, the fire is actually going to spill outside into an effect around the window. So when they hit this for a third time, the fire is going to start burning on the outside as well. I'm going to have to move pretty sharpish here. Just got away. So you can see that the fire then burns around the outside as well. 
That's when the bar the the Vulcan canister is halfway up the barricade. It's on the outside and the inside. Now, the second way of using the Vulcan canister on the barricade is quite sneaky. We're going to go ahead and place the canister on the bottom of the barricade. Now, at first, it doesn't look like it's going to go on the very bottom, but it will slide down into place like so. When an attacker is on the other side of this barricade, they're not going to see this canister because it's below the window level. However, when they hit the barricade, let's just get rid of it twice. Like so. There's two things that are going to happen now. An attacker is either going to hit the barricade for the third time, and the fire, because it's below the window line, will remain on the inside of the building. Because it's lower down, no fire will spill outside like it did previously. Instead, what's going to happen is all the fire will go off on the inside, but one of two things is going to happen to the attacker here. They're either going to hit the barricade three times before they jump in, or, like I do all the time, they're going to hit the barricade twice, and as you know, once you've hit a barricade twice, you can then vault through the window. However, when I vault through the window here, the, the Vulcan canister on the other side is going to go off. Now, I've only got 11 HP here left over from showing you the other type of barricade canister. But when I jump in here, I'm going to be dead almost immediately because the canister will go off as I jump in. So where Goyo is really going to come into his own now for me is the default plant denial. So let's just use the default plant here on Oregon. This wall gets opened. The default plant is, is behind the, uh, the football table here. If you put a, a Vulcan canister here... Now you've just got to watch yourself from games window or gen window, whatever you want to call it. You can still cover from the breach, but you can, just as you know, they're going to push toward default plant. You can obviously, again, watch the window. Let's hope you've still got asset control. But you can now destroy this Vulcan canister here while still being protected from the breach. Which is going to deny that default spot and a lot of the rest of that area for 20 seconds again. The default denial options that Goyo is going to bring to the team is, is going to be huge. So we've talked about default plant denial. We can also talk about default sort of area denial. Everybody on attack wants to push blue these days on Oregon downstairs. When playing elbow, you can really help your smoke out if times are getting tough. As we said before, don't place the canister here so they have to peek around the corner. Place it in a place where you can... Place it in a place? What? Put it in a place where you can hide behind the corner and still be able to detonate the canister whilst not exposing yourself to the attackers. Every smoke that plays Albo on Oregon, that includes me, by the way, is going to thank you a million times for putting a Goyo canister here. Now, I, I don't know why I'm calling them Goyo canisters all of a sudden instead of Vulcan canisters, but there you go, same thing. Now that whole corridor where the attackers want to push down is clear, I can carry on holding this corner and carry on holding this part of the map for a lot longer. A new mechanic of the Vulcan canisters, which is incredibly strong, is when they're placed on soft walls or soft um, parts of the map. So I'm going to show you two examples here. And this one is incredibly good. So any normal soft wall, when you destroy the Vulcan shield, half the fire is going to be this side. And when you go the other side of the soft wall, half the fire is that side as well. It makes a little hole in the wall, but the fire goes through both sides, which is mad strong. You just can essentially hold one side of a particular room through a soft wall whilst denying an area on the other side. This one is insanely good for cafe. When it comes to denying the... Uh, you normally have a rotate here, so let's just put that in with a C4. When it comes to denying the default plant, if you've made a hole in the bar here like I normally do, you can destroy this. Detonate that, which destroys the whole of the bar there, but also completely engulfs the uh, the, f the default plant area in flames as well. But don't get me wrong, they could just plant here still, but that means that bar is now um, see-through, so you can still see if they're planting there. You can, as you want to hold that area, you can destroy that Vulcan shield, and if they don't burn to death anyway, you can still see them there. Unbelievably strong spot to use that, and that's the same everywhere when it comes to soft walls or just soft furniture in the map. It'll go through the other side of it as well. Something else that you can do that I think works really well is you can set up default denial spots or area denial spots for your teammates who have impact grenades or C4. Obviously with a C4, you'd just blow it from below anyway. But if you, let's just use this area on club here. If you put a Vulcan there in this fashion, so it's backwards to the attackers, they can't destroy that without explosives. However, if you've got a teammate who's got impacts who's still downstairs late on in the round, obviously if you have a C4, you'd just C4 them, but let's pretend this is an impact grenade. They're low, they're um, below the, the default plant, and it's only, say, a lesion left who's got impacts. Explosives also detonate the Vulcan shield. So if they don't want to try and guess where they are by shooting through the floor, lay these Vulcan shields in default plant spots, and you can then allow the teammates with impacts to detonate them later in the round if need be as well.
So just using some examples, the first thing to always do on this site is destroy the radio. Some examples of where I'm going to put my Goyo canisters when it comes to actually defending sites. We're going to use top floor in Oregon as the first example. I'm going to actually place this one here. Don't know why I didn't place down. There we go. So first one on the trophy door. Next one on the default plant. Next one's going to go top white. And the final one's going to go big window. Now... It's up to you whether you want to put this on the barricade or whether you put it on underneath the window. I personally am going to go with the barricade higher up. As we talked about earlier on, that'll mean the fire goes outside the window when it's detonated, when the barricade is destroyed. The reason I put those four there then, if you've got someone playing hobo who's holding trophy door, they can now detonate this without having to peek trophy door. Your guy in attic, who we've talked about already, can stop the, de the default plant area. Obviously just watch the window. Your guy in kids, there's no rotate. I was going to go through a rotate there. The guy in kids, who's holding white, can now destroy that here. And the big window canister is going to go off as soon as anyone destroys the barricade anyway. I think that's a really solid setup with Goyo. And you've got the three main pinch areas all covered. Especially the default plant. Another place where I think reworked Goyo is absolutely unbelievable is prep on cafe downstairs. So, let's start with just one... You can put it on the wall if you want to. I'm just going to put it here as an example. Obviously, the exact placements are up to you. We go with one there. We go one here. We go one here. You can keep the third for the default plant spot. The bomb is normally here, obviously. You can keep the third for the default plant spot here. The area of effect will stretch a far enough over to the default plant spot, which is insane. But just talking about holding prep... You can, each one of these canisters, as, we, as we've discussed, will now deny an area for 20 seconds. So let's just say there's 60 seconds or a minute and a half left in the round. You can now deny the, the front of prep. I'm not going to be able to come through there now. You can wait 20 seconds. And let's say the 20 seconds is over. They're coming through the next part of prep. You can deny that area. And from the safety of this side, you can then deny this area. That's now 60 seconds worth of time that they can't come through prep for. That's why I think Goyo is insanely strong these days. If you can stay alive long enough and you can actually get the, the canisters off and you can be patient with them, obviously don't detonate these at the start of the round because there's not much point in that. It's incredibly, incredibly good. Now, what I mentioned earlier on on the cafe um, aspect of things upstairs when the um, Goyos work on the softballs this time, how many people come into cafe, come into bakery, make sure bakery's clear, destroy the default camp, sit here and throw the drone on the floor. It happens all the time. They've got somebody holding small bake. They throw the drone on the floor here because this is normally reinforced. Well, how about you don't reinforce this this time and you put a canister here and you pop that. Oh, I can't. Let me try and run through without dying. It's going to take a tick or so. Now that the um, canister on the soft wall there, the fire extends all the way over to the bakery door. It's such a big area. He's so, so good. I actually think there's going to be times now where not reinforcing the wall might be more beneficial than reinforcing the wall because you can do things like this. Using that same theory that we've just used downstairs on bakery, that the fire extends through the other side of the soft wall, we're going to use top red on cafe as an example, and this is a bit ridiculous, but it works. So, we've now got four Vulcans on the wall here. Bear in mind, in my testing, I've experienced no what I'll call splash damage between the, the canisters. So if I detonate this canister, that doesn't detonate the ones either side of it. In my testing, I don't know if that changes for anyone else, but we'll see. So now we've got the canisters here. We don't want anyone to drop top red. Or we don't want anyone even coming up top red. No problem. So this wall would normally be reinforced. Obviously, you'll have to leave your soft for this time. Canister one. No one can drop red hatch. No problem. Canister two. There's 20 seconds. Canister two. Canister three. Canister three doesn't want to get shot. Canister three. <laughs> All four of those canisters will deny up to this area here, which is directly under the hatch. No one's going to drop red hatch while there's flames underneath them unless, they're, uh, unless they've got a death wish. So yeah, that's another idea you can use. I don't know if that's as strong as reinforcing this wall. Maybe it is, because holding this area is a nightmare anyway. Obviously, you're going to have to watch all three windows. But yeah, there's 120 seconds worth of denial onto... Uh, sorry, 80. I don't know why I've just said 120 seconds. That's two minutes. There's a minute. <laughs> Good math, Sandy. There's a minute and 20 seconds worth of denial onto top red. So again, if you can survive long enough that they're not into top red with a minute and 20 seconds left, and these four are still here, there's the round. Nobody's coming up top red. Obviously, they can come somewhere else, but 
And, you know, a minute and 20 seconds worth of denial there is absolutely insane, in my opinion. Another big choke point on maps is Piano Double on Chalet. So if you go over into the sort of plants here and get it right in the corner, it's almost... In, you see how it slides back at the last second? If you're an attacker coming around here, you can't see it there. If you come up library, up library stairs, you know, you're certainly not looking there, and you can barely see it. Now, if you're playing on Piano Double, you've normally got a shield on Piano, or even if you're just playing around the Piano, you can start denying them entry into this area straight away. You can even put one here, which is super obvious, but it's good. they're going to have to clear that before they come up here, so there's another 20 seconds gone. If an attacker comes here, they know they have to clear this. They can't just leave that there in case you detonate it, so they're going to have to shoot that, which takes another 20 seconds. Obviously, if that's double reinforced, any teammate behind here doesn't have to worry about it, but just be aware, once that gets detonated, the fire will come into this side as well. So you could even put one there, which you know is not going to be much use, but they have to clear it, which wastes 20 seconds. So let's do that. Now they can't come through piano double. It does stretch nearly as far as default plant behind half wall, but not quite as far. So now you're here. That's 20 seconds gone. You know you can do that. Oh, hang on. Let's actually hit it. There's another 20 seconds gone. Probably put one on the balcony as well, just to be safe. But there's another 20 seconds gone. And then in pushing again, there's another 20 seconds. Right, stay out. Fall back a little bit to here. Obviously, watch your double window. It's just, it's, I can't get over that it lasts for 20 seconds. So there's, there's a minute and 20 seconds worth of denial. Essentially, when you're playing Goyo, if you can think you can survive until there's a minute and 20 seconds left in the round, and you've got your four canisters placed well, you just know the attackers aren't going to be able to come through without running through flames, which I absolutely don't recommend. One thing I will mention at this point, I probably should have mentioned this earlier in the video, but it's just reminded me. The amount of canisters that you put down doesn't stack up the damage. So if you put two canisters down and you destroy both of them, it doesn't do 12 damage. Uh, it doesn't do 12 damage times two because there's two canisters there. You're still just classed as sort of in fire and it does 12 damage per tick. It doesn't stack up. So I showed you guys this angle on a, on a different video, but I'll show you again now. The other thing you could do with um, Goyo is use the angle on clubhouse for garage stairs. I think it's going to be somewhere probably about here. So sort of two thirds of the way up the stairs, nearly at the top. We've got the rotator, the, the head holes here, and I've made a, a little hole here. This would obviously be a shotgun hole, ideally. Somebody can stand on the cash desk here. And if we, can I see it somewhere? Yeah, it's there. So if we just shoot out the bottom a bit more. Obviously, with a shotgun hole, it'd be a bit easier to see. But you can now deny garage stairs from inside cash. Um, I mean, that covers the whole of the garage stairs. You could maybe even put two up like, as you go up the stairs to, to deny it a bit more. It gets a little bit down the stairs as well. I, I just... I've been making this video right, and I keep saying it. I can't get over the area of effect. It's absolutely huge. And even whilst I'm still oaring over the area of effect, the time that it goes on is forever as well, like 20 seconds. But there's another example of the way you could use it, but a far longer line of sight. Now, an attacker may well Ash Charge or Nade that or Zof Charge or Gone Sixty or whatever it might be. But if they have to do that, that's a bit of utility that's gone out of their utility pool. And that's another reason the Goyo uh, canisters are good. A nice one here on Canal for the new bridge area of the map. This is a classic rush point. Put it on the back of the flight cases here. And then if you're playing top green, you can make a little punch hole and when you go prone here. You can see all the way over to the... Uh, obviously, you can just hold that angle anyway and shoot there if you need to. But in a pinch, you can destroy that and that just completely nullifies the new bridge area for a little while. Whilst I'm here, another one on canal, and this goes for pretty much all stairs, which have got a sort of thing that you can look over the top of. And this falls in line with what I was saying about make sure you place your canisters where you can destroy them, but you're not liable to being peaked by the attackers. This works for top red stairs on clubhouse and various other stairs on various other maps. This canister here means I can deny green stairs from here without an attacker being able to peek me. If an attacker's down here and they're looking at what's going on, they can't see me here. However, if, you know, don't detonate this canister from here. You know what I mean? Because you're just going to be peaked from here. Make sure you're in safety when you destroy it. No attackers coming up here for 20 seconds and it goes all the way to the bottom of the stairs. I think I'm going to be playing a lot more Goyo this season. So there we have it. That's the Goyo rework. As I said at the beginning of the video, for me, probably the strongest area control operator that's in Siege at the minute. He's absolutely nuts. The area of effect is insane. It's huge. And the amount of time that it takes, 20 seconds, and he gets four of them, that's 80 seconds worth of area denial on those Vulcan canisters. I think we're going to see a lot more Goyo played this season. In case you didn't know, I also stream on Twitch four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 p.m. UK time. 
Come and give us a follow over there. It doesn't cost you anything. Come and say hello. Say you came from YouTube and I'll, I don't know, do a dance or something. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support as always. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.